Sounds like a lot of stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> I was just fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. And, you know, it's, it's interesting how um, when you're in the military, people say, aren't you discriminated against? Aren't you this? Aren't you that? I said, no. I just took charge of my life. I took charge of my career, and I did what I wanted to do. And that's what I want to talk about today is taking the helm. And that's what I did. I took the helm. I, am, I didn't accept no. I'm like, okay, there's a way around it. I'm going to find that. And I would. And it would amaze my bosses, like, well, how'd you do that? I'm like, where there's a will, there's a way. Women are very keen on finding that way. And we are. All of us are keen on finding that way. So, you know, I look at every day as choosing to make it the best day of my life for the rest of my life. I went through a lot of hardships, yeah. Got deployed to lovely places that I wouldn't go vacation. (laughs) But I always made it the best. Because I knew that if I could make it the best, I would make it the best for someone else. And I was deployed all over the United States because I was a recruiter for the Army. And I purposely did not go to two different organizations, uh, places. One was in New York and one was in Louisiana. Too cold, too hot. So when I was at the Intel school, they said, we got to send you up to help this unit. They're, they're not doing very well, blah, blah, blah. And I said, where are they? They're in New York. I'm like, well, spirit has a sense of humor. And I said, so where are they going? And they said, well, they're deploying down to Louisiana. <laughs> are you kidding me? So that's what happened. But what I made it a point of, it was very hard and very difficult what we were trying to accomplish. It was something that they'd never done before in the Army. So I would come in every day with a smile on my face and say, how are you? How's it going? What's it look like? What are we doing today? What's happening? What? And one of the sergeant majors came up and he goes, I don't know what you've been smoking but I want some of that. I said, it's just life. It's just God. So when we show up as God, it can only be a good life. When we show up as our true selves, it can only be who we want to be. So if you're not taking the helm, who is? Who are you allowing to drive your life? Who are you allowing to take your life away and Make it what you don't want it to experience. Who's causing you not to be your true self? It starts with us. When we allow other people to dictate how we're going to be, where we're going to show up, you're in a relationship and you're, you're bending over like Gumby trying to make it all work, and you're like, this isn't working. No matter what the relationship is, be it with friends, family, Just like, this isn't working for me. I can't be my authentic self. I'm not taking the helm. I'm not driving the train. I'm I'm on the back of the bus. And so I look at life as like, you've got to be in charge. Because if you don't feel good about what you're doing, how can you reflect that out? How can you reflect it out? How can you be all you can be, as the army would say? How can you do that? And when we read in the Science of Mind book, our textbook, you, you read the words that Ernest says. Take charge of your life because you're the only one driving. Be all you can be. Do all you want to do. Have the life that you want to have. Because you can. We're manifesting generators. We get to generate and manifest whatever we want to experience in our life. And when we're not, We get to take a look at what's going on. Why am I not getting the job I want? Why am I not getting the clients I want? Why is things feel like I'm on this bumpy road in a manual transmission that I don't know how to drive, so you're just doing this? So you pull over and you're like, what do I got to do different? How do I get to be different? What do I have to change about myself first? Because it always starts here, 
whether you're dealing with family, it's, it's the holiday seasons, and so, for some people, it's very emotional. It's very hard, because family life is hard life some, for some. And for others, it's like a great celebration. So we have to look at how I want to show up for that family. How I want to show up and be in the holiday spirit, or do I want to be grumpy mumpy? How do I want to be? I like showing up, being all happy and glad, and, hey, I'm here, and what can I do? And it used to drive my mother absolutely crazy. My dad would laugh. He goes, well, she's just being herself. Because I couldn't do that as a kid. So when I left and became the adult that I wanted to be, I could come back and be who I truly was, happy and glad and showing up and driving my mom crazy. And, but I got to drive the train. It's about me taking the helm, not allowing anyone else to do that for me. And then when it got crazy at the house, I would just go down to the beach and just sit. So if there's a, a practice that needs to help you find that center, then use that practice, be it meditation, calling a practitioner, sitting down and reading a book, just being in that space, and just trying to rewrite and recalculate our GPS. You know how you make a wrong turn, the GPS is like recalculating, recalculating. <laughs> and that's what we get to do. We would get to recalculate how we want to take our path. We don't have to listen to anyone else, and we don't have to go follow the truck in front of you because you don't know where you're going. Just pull over and say, where is it I want to go? I think the scariest thing that's happening right now is these self-driving vehicles. Really? You're not in charge anymore. You get in and you're like, take me to the store. Well, there's 13 stores in the town. Which one do you want to go to? But it's self-driving and you're not in charge and you're not taking the helm. And what happens is it's not sure how to go in some places, as we have seen. There's accidents and other stuff that happen. And I said... I'll never have one of those things because I want to be in charge. I know where I'm going. I know how to take the helm. It's like the paradigm of Abilene. Have you ever heard of that, the Abilene paradigm? No? So there's a bunch of group of their family members. They all live in Abilene, Texas, or outside of Abilene. They're all sitting on the front porch, and this is back in the day when we didn't have air conditioning or TV, they had radio. They're all sitting there rocking away. Somebody says, how about we go to Abilene? Everybody else says, oh, I don't know, it's just too hot. And there's nothing else to do in Abilene that we can't do here. And they're like, no, no, let's all go to Abilene. So they all pile in the car, and the car doesn't have air conditioning. And they're driving down the road, they're all cramped in there and going along, and it's, you know, they're chit-chatting and about Abilene is this and that and blah, 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 blah. They get to Abilene and they're like, what are we doing here? Why do we come? Because one person suggested to go, even though other people didn't want to go, they didn't take the helm. They let someone else take the helm. So they all piled back in the car and said, we're going home. And it was dead quiet. Is your life an Abilene paradigm where just getting in the car and going wherever you're going? Or are you taking charge? See, the, the coolest thing about science of mind is that we get to take charge. And that's what Ernest teaches us. Take charge of your life. Change your thinking. Change your thoughts. How do you want to experience your life? That's the experience you get to experience. Not what your parents say, not what your spouses say, not what your friends say, not what anyone else says. And that's what I love about this teaching. In the first class, I sat there and I cried. It's like, it's about time I took my life back. And that's what it's about, is empowering ourselves. 
How do I want to show up? How do I want to experience it? How do I want to be in the world today? Not tomorrow, today. And you get in the car and I like, how do I want to be today? And that's how you take your life back. By just stating it, setting the intention and saying, I'm not accepting anything else. All these people want to run and do, and they're running after and running after and running. You see them running after all of these things and stuff and whatever. The right car, the right house, the right spouse, the right this, the right that. But are they happy? Not really. Because it's someone else saying this is what the right thing to have is. This is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to be. My family would say, why aren't you married? You're 25. You're getting old. I'm like, I'm not ready. And I wasn't. But I also couldn't tell him I was gay. Because my dad was a police officer, and he would just come undone. But I took charge of my life and said, I'm not ready. My life is my life right now. And this is how I'm going to live my life. My dad would walk away and shake his head and he goes, I don't know who, who she is. But that's how we have to do it. And that's what I don't see sometimes talking to people about their life. They come and they said, I don't know what to do. Well, I'll help you find that. That's one thing I help people do is coach them through, what do you want to experience? Because when you get out of the military, or you get out of your job, you retire, you're leaving a tribe. And you're going into a new tribe, or you don't have a tribe. And you're like, I don't know what to do anymore. You have to find your tribe. Here's your tribe right here. Your spiritual community is your tribe. And that's the coolest thing about this organization, this place called CSL, we have our own tribe. And we all think alike. And no one's saying, you're not taking the right class or you're not doing the right thing. They're like celebrating. Man, you just did that? That's awesome. I have never felt so fully supported as I have in this teaching. You're becoming a minister? That's crazy, but that's awesome. Never a bad word, never, man, you know, be a minister? Are you kidding me? That's a lot of work. Uh, Yes, it is, but I love it. I love what I do because I'm in charge. I've empowered myself. And when we forget that, we are truly in charge of our own lives. Just call a practitioner. Say, I'm a little lost today. Or sit down and do a tapping session and say, I'm not sure how to feel today. I'm not sure how to be. Listen to some music. Have a meditation. But always come back to center and always say, I'm taking my life back. Because when we're in the crowd, and we get enough of that at the airport and the train station, but we're in the crowd... Are we in the flow? Does it feel like you're in the flow? I'm like, I'm not in the flow, so I need to take a step back. And what does that look like? Taking the helm is nothing more than taking your life back. Louise Hay said it. The Dalai Lama says it. Mother Teresa came out and said many times, you know, spirit doesn't give us any, anything more than we can handle. But I wish he'd give me something less because I'm handling way too much. <laughs> and when it feels like we're handling way too much, it's because spirit is pushing us, stretching us, and saying to us, you can do this. You can do anything that you want to do. Take on anything you want to take on. And when someone says, "My, I'm too old, I'm like, Phew. You're never too old. And my example is always the woman that painted at 90, 
Grandma Moses, absolutely. She could have sat in her rocker and said, well, I'm 90, I'm too old, I can't do this. She did not. She did not. And those of us who went through ministerial school in the older ages, 50 and above, (laughs) they're all like, aren't you a little old for this? I'm like, no, I'm a little young for this. We're never too old to do anything. Start a new hobby. Start running. Start whatever. What is it that you want to experience? How do you want to live? That's what I ask myself every morning. I get up and I say, how is this day going to be for me? Who do I get to reach out to? Who do I get to touch? Who do I get to say I love you? Who do I get to give a smile to? Who do I get to influence today and make their day better? Because there's a lot of sadness out there, a lot of sadness. And the holidays are especially sad. For me, they're really sad at Thanksgiving. I lost my great-grandmother, my grandmother, and my father. And for years, it was just so painful. And so when I started studying, it's like, I didn't lose anything. I gained a lot. My grandmother was an amazing woman. She was young, raised six kids as a single mom back in the 30s and 40s. That was unheard of. She was a great storyteller. And what she taught me is you take every situation and you make it your own. And I was like, wow. And I didn't realize what a gift that was as a 12-year-old. Because that's when I lost her. Sitting there listening to her stories. And it's true today. How do I want to be? I want to take the helm. I want to be in charge. I don't want anyone else driving my life. I want to do that. And God doesn't drive our lives. God walks with us. God's not walking in front of us or behind us but within us. And that's what's so magnificent. And when you learn and grow through this teaching and you learn that I am not alone, I am always walking with God, even though it appears I'm walking alone. You look at the footprints in the sand? Exactly. It's the same every day. And that's what I love about this teaching about the principles. Today is the first day of our lives. You can't fix yesterday, and you can't take care of tomorrow. And many people try to fix yesterday, don't they? You know, if I only thought, if I only did, if, you know, if, 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 woulda, woulda, coulda, shoulda, That thing is going to beat you to death if you don't let it go. (laughs) Who cares? It happened. We learn from our mistakes. And that's what Ernest Holmes tells us. We learn from our mistakes. They make us stronger, wiser, better people. They don't bring us down. They don't drag us down. They make us stronger, better, wiser. I love that. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, you can drag that stuff around forever. How your family treated you, how you didn't do well on a test, how you, you know, didn't do well in high school and you did really great in college or whatever part of your life you didn't do well. It's over. It's done. Call it good and move on. Because that's what it's all about. Taking back your power and saying, I'm not living like that. I'm living like this. And nobody but nobody is going to tell me otherwise. And if they do, I get to stand up for myself and say, I'm not going to Abilene today. I'm staying right here. 
being all I can be, loving myself, forgiving myself, growing myself, and knowing that God is walking this path with me. And that's what it's all about. That's it. Very simple. That's all, what it's all about. Take your life back. Take your power back. Take back the helm. And you'll be happier, healthier, more prosperous, more whatever you want to experience in life. So this week, I want you to reflect on how do I want to show up for Thanksgiving? How do I want to be with my family? Even if they drive me crazy, I get to be the calm and the chaos. Even if I'm feeling sad because I don't have a parent or a family, I get to experience it different. And that's what's important about this teaching is we get to experience it different. And we get to let go, and we get to let God. So please join me in prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. As we join in consciousness knowing that this is a week of celebrating, being thankful, being grateful, being ourselves, knowing that God is with us, within us, walking this journey of whatever each of us have decided showing up at Thanksgiving, showing up with family, showing up as our true God selves. No matter what is going on, we each get to choose that place of being. And knowing that God is walking, being, thriving, driving, inspiring each one of us, How incredible is that? I know for each one here today that this week of celebrating gratitude of just who they are, unique expressions of God, walking their pathway, walking their journey, taking the helm, empowering themselves and saying, I am here to be all I can be. And I am grateful for each one. And I'm knowing for each one a sense of gratitude and prosperity and oneness with the one source and the one power. I'm knowing for each one that this is a week of celebrating all that each one are. Standing in themselves, standing in the power of God. I simply say thank you. Thank you for each one of these beautiful faces, these beautiful spirits, these beautiful God beings showing up just as they are, authentic, true, powerful, unique expressions. Thank you, God, for this center, for these CSL Las Cruces and inviting me here and sharing these moments. Thank you for this opportunity to just be my authentic self, loving each and every one of these individuals as they are. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for all that we celebrate. And I release these words into the law, knowing that it's perfect. It's done. It's complete. And I allow it to be. And so it is. (laughs) 